coinciding with the news of a cut in train services as part of the campaign to save coal, there comes to London for its naming ceremony the first of British Railway's standard locomotives. To the experts, it's a Class 7 462. And into this locomotive have been incorporated many of the best ideas from engines of the era before nationalization. Of famous classes like the LMS Royal Scott, the Great Western Castle class, the LNER Streamlined Pacific class. the Southern Railway's Merchant Navy class. Those four engine classes are some of the most famous on the rails today. And together with the best features from the 400 odd other designs now running on British Railways, they have helped to make up the new standard loco. Work on it began some months ago, when designers from the various regions got together and pooled their ideas. Once these had been translated into the blueprint stage, it was not long before Britain's largest railway workshops were on the job and beneath the steam hammer at crew, it was all change for the standard loco. Standardization was all embracing. Everything was standardized from the big boiler to the smallest spare part. In that way, servicing and repair would become a much simpler process. And most important, there would be standard wheels with precision balances to ensure that the engines could travel on all the main lines in the country. And with barely a flutter of excitement, a revolution in engine design was accomplished. Amid the clatter of crew, the standard loco was taking shape. A new giant of the permanent way was got ready to take its permanent place in the engine spotter's notebook. At the time, most of the design was still a much guarded secret. And all that was revealed was that there would be something new and something old. And together, this would add up to Britannia the name given to this first example of the engine maker's standard design. Earlier this month, the standard loco, then still nameless, went out on test. A dynamometer car filled with a staff of experts was attached to it to check its performance. And after more than two weeks of running in in the north of England, number 70,000 was declared fit for service and came south to London and Marylebone Station to be named. There on Tuesday, the Minister of Transport, Mr Barnes, put the newcomer officially into action. Before uncovering the brass nameplate, Mr Barnes said that this latest British engineering product was the first of 160 standard type locomotives to come off the assembly lines this year. And, said Mr Barnes, in 1951, when we are going to tell our story of the past, the present, and demonstrate our faith and confidence in the future in what we are now describing as the Festival of Britain. And people, we hope, will come from all over the world to see evidences of the story of this country in the past. And when they do, railway men will be interested, wherever they come from, will be interested to see how we are carrying on the story of railways which we invented and made known to the world. And when they look at this uh, locomotive, ladies and gentlemen, I think they'll be able to say, as I've said in the past, Britain still leads the world with a steam locomotive. And I have very great pleasure now and pride in unveiling this locomotive and naming her Britannia. A ministerial pull at the curtains uncovered the new engine's nameplate, and there for all to see was proof that Britannia now rules the rails as well. To complete the ceremony, the minister stepped onto the footplate and accompanied by railway officials, rode out of Marylebone Station at the controls of Britain's newest engine. And Britannia, in her shining coat of dark green, gave of her best. 
Britannia is the largest of 12 engine types which are to be standardized by British Railways. And this week she goes into official service for the first time, hauling express passenger trains in the eastern region.